Hi guys, today we're going to be discussing elements of poetry. In your objectives today, I will identify and explain the elements of poetry. We will use a poem to identify the various elements of poetry. So what is poetry? Poetry can tell a story, describe a situation, or appeal to your senses. So it sounds kind of like a story, right? Kind of, but poetry can be spoken with or without music. Hmm, we don't necessarily apply music to just a book, right? And poetry, we need to remember that it does not have to rhyme in order to be called a poem. Okay? So what are the elements of poetry? There are two big elements elements of poetry, which include structure and literary devices. And in those two, as you can see on the next slide, they break down into smaller parts. So the structure of a poem includes the lines and the stanza. The literary devices include the rhyming words, the rhythm, imagery, alliteration, onomatopoeias, and repetition. So if you'll take a moment, pause the video right now, and get out your reading journal in order to write these down in there so that you keep them with you. As you're viewing poetry, you will need to try to identify these various aspects. So do that now. All right, so let's explain a little bit. When we talk about the lines, you will see um, as a poem is written, there are lines. You can actually count the lines. And in a moment, I'll give you an example. But a line is where each line of text sits. So then you have the stanza, which is a group of lines within a poem. A stanza is much like a chapter in a book, okay? And then you have the literary devices, rhyming words. Remember that the rhyming words is the same ending sound at the end of the lines or the stanzas, okay? And rhythm is a pattern of stressed syllables that create a beat. So your imagery, of course, we've discussed about creating mental images. So the imagery are the words that create images that appeal to your senses. Remember your five senses we talked about? Alliteration is the same sound or letter at the beginning of words or lines. So you would have, if your line had an S at the beginning of each word, then that could be considered alliteration. Um, onomatopoeia is a word that imitates the sound it represents, like buzz or thud um, or beep, beep. Those are onomatopoeias. And then you have repetition, which is when lines or words are repeated to stress importance. So here we have a poem that I found, and it's the title of this poem is called Surprise, okay? So I'm going to read the poem, and then we're going to discuss a few elements in this poem. See if you can identify them before I have a chance to explain them to you. Surprise. They rolled their eyes and groaned and quickly grabbed their books, flipping through the pages for a few last fleeting looks. They grumbled and they cringed, and all gave evil eyes. They whispered to their neighbors. They filled the room with sighs. They knew that this would happen, could be heard throughout the room. And they sharpened up their pencils as they all foresaw their doom. They squawked and moaned and sniveled. They made every sound there is. The day their teacher told them they'd be having a pop quiz. Sound familiar? Absolutely. So what we have here, I hope you were able to identify the elements we've been discussing. But if not, just for a quick review, if you look at the blue dots, they are indicating to you the lines of the poem. Okay, this poem has 16 lines. The red indicates the stanza. 
there are four stanzas in this poem. There are four lines in each stanza. Now, if you look over here, I've only done the first stanza, but what I did was the rhyme pattern. And the rhyme pattern is when you look at the very last word to see what rhymes. So you have groaned, books, pages, looks. So you always start with that A right there. Groaned is A. So when you look at books, does books rhyme with groaned? If it doesn't, then you have to put a B. Okay? Then you go down and look at pages. Does pages rhyme with groaned or books? If it doesn't, you have to put a C. Then you look at the fourth line, looks. Does looks rhyme with groaned, books, or pages? I think it does. Look, it rhymes with books. Looks, books. So we need to put a B so that they match. That tells us that those two rhyme. Okay? So when we go to the next stanza, we're going to start all over again. We have cringed, which would be A. Eyes, eyes cringed. Hmm, that should be B because it does not rhyme with cringed. And then we have neighbors. Hmm, neighbors cringed, eyes. That doesn't rhyme either. So again, we have a C. And then on the fourth line, we have size. Hmm, cringed, eyes, neighbors, size. Wait, eyes, size. Hmm, eyes, size. Those rhyme. So I'm going to put the same letter, the letter B, right here. Now, do you see a pattern here? You should, if you're following along, your rhyme pattern is A, B, C, B. And if you pause the video, take a moment, check the other two stanzas. We already know that stanza two does the exact same rhyme pattern, A, B, C, B. All right, so remember, poetry does not have to rhyme. Poetry uses many literary devices that help bring it to life, bring you in and make it more fun to read. A stanza in poems is similar to a paragraph in a book. And make sure you remember that we're listening to the end rhyme of each line to find out if the poem rhymes or to find the rhyme pattern. After viewing this video, be sure to read the story or task that the teacher has placed in the task box before submitting your completed assignments. Thank you for joining me and y'all have a good evening.